now we come to lecture 4 of unit 1 first we will discuss the brief description of different components of the transmission system what are the components of transmission system clutch gearbox final drive universal joints differential clutch what is the function of the clutch the function of the clutch is to disconnect drive from the road wheels instantly and engage drive from engine to the road wheels gradually gradually when moving the vehicle from rest you must have all used a clutch whether it be on a two wheeler four wheeler and would be conversant gearbox the function of the gearbox is to provide a leverage with leverage with a variation which is why we have the gears between the engine and the road wheels maximum leverage we will require at the time of starting because the vehicle is at rest and the maximum tractive effort is required when we want to start the engine and that is accomplished by gear number one and as it picks up speed we shift from gear one to two to three to four like that final drive <coughs> final drive is contained in the differential box the shaft parallel shaft is connected at the end is a bevel pivonium and a large crown wheel which is inside which you can't see these vehicles you must have seen these trucks on the road it's contained inside the differential rear differential you cannot see it there's a bevel pinion and crown wheel from there the drive goes to the differential now what is the function of final drive the final drive turns the drive to 90 degrees Propeller shift shaft is drive is from the engine coming through the propeller shaft to the center of the vehicle and from there 90 degrees to one wheel and the other 90 degrees to the other wheel. This is the meaning of that. And it also provides a permanent reduction in speed. Engine speed is very high, whereas when the vehicle starts, the RPM of the wheels will be very low. So that reduction has to be provided. We will study in detail when we come to this subject. The reduction is approximately 4 is to 1 in cars and approximately 10 is to 1 for heavier vehicles. Bevel pinion mounted on the shaft connected to propeller shaft as I said through the universal joint and then from the crown wheel the drive goes to differential as I mentioned. Universal joints, they are generally in pairs, they are always two. They provide a relative mo movement between the engine and wheels due to flexing of road springs. The road springs will, will flex, jab koi, that speed breaker aata hai, or be, if there is any disformity in the road, the differential will move up and down, so will the propeller shaft and so the angle of the propeller shaft must be maintained, the drive must be maintained and for that the universal joints provide that motion, relative motion. Again we will study this and you will be further clear when we come to this particular topic. Universal provide relevant movement as I said, differential. Differential as I said big trucks you must have seen while traveling on your two wheelers at the rear the big in the big round thing in the axle which is called the differential and it has various functions one of the main function is 
to turn on turns. The inner and outer wheels turn at different radii, hence different speeds. Now imagine your vehicle, you're driving your vehicle, you take a right turn. Now the front right wheel will cover a small, smaller distance compared to the front left wheel. So the left wheel will have to turn faster, that move faster compared to the inner wheel to keep pace. So this, so both the wheels will be at different speeds on a turn. To maintain this, to do this, this job is done by the differential. Now we come to each specific part. In this lecture, we will cover the clutch, most of the clutch components. Now, what is the definition of a clutch? A clutch is a mechanism enabling rotary motion of one shaft to be transmitted when desired to the second shaft, which is coincident with that of the first. Let us understand this definition on a chart. This is one plate revolving at an RPM, let's say N RPM, sharp, sharp A with surface C at an RPM. This shaft B with surface D is at 0 RPM. Now when they are brought in contact through an axial force, W is the axial force, so gradually the friction will take place and gradually it will attain the speed of the A shaft. The B shaft will and they will be joined together. This is called the principle of a friction clutch. This is a diagram of a simple single plate clutch. As you can see, this is the clutch plate. It has got <coughs> cushioning springs because of the rotary motion. <coughs> Gradually, the both the contact surfaces come into frictional contact. This is the section inside. See the hub where splines are made, where the shaft, the clutch shaft is put in. This is the clutch facing, cushion springs. These are torsional springs for torsional vibrations and torsional effect when it is turning and getting into contact. Rivets are for the clutch facing which is riveted. Now clutch facing is on both sides of the clutch plate. You must have seen definitely roadside workshop mechanics and uh, the shape of a simple clutch plate. Now let us see what are the types of clutches. First one is the friction clutches which we just talked about. Friction caused in two reading discs for that. And the second type is the fluid flywheel. In this the transfer of energy took place through frictional contact. Here the transfer of energy from one rotor to another is through a liquid medium through a liquid medium. We will be studying fluid flywheel in much detail as the course progresses. Principle of friction clutch. Here the torque is coefficient of friction multiplied by the axial load or force and R is the effective mean radius of the friction surfaces. Like as you saw, if this is the frictional case, this is one radius, 
this is the other so the mean radius would somewhere r would be somewhere in between here now let's have a look at the friction materials used in the friction clutches clutch facing let us see what this material is made of the material which comes into contact friction of contact now what are the requirements of a good clutch facing because there will be a lot of friction heat generated while coming into frictional contact with the surface let's say pressure plate and the clutch plate so what should be the properties it should have a good binder in it good binder to keep the material from exploding or breaking cheap and easy to manufacture should have a high coefficient of friction a high resistance to heat approximately 330 degrees centigrade naturally when frictional contact takes place at high speeds tremendous heat will be generated this is the order of the round of a simple clutch single plate clutch around 330 degrees centigrade or even a multi plate clutch it should have good wearing properties for maximum life in fact it should be good anti wear properties it should wear less to obtain the maximum possible life from the clutch face lining what are the types of frictional material first is the millboard type it's nothing but treated asbestos it is an asbestos sheet with impregnates various other compounds are added to it but the main the base is asbestos impregnates make it tough it should <coughs> it is cheap but satisfactory asbestos is the cheapest the bolded type is mixing asbestos fibers with a binder and then heating to a specific temperature and then mold it in dies under pressure this is the process of making it you could also insert metal wires to improve the wear qualities it should all it should be more dense capable of heavy loads simple the third is the woven type woven type is a cloth impregnated with binder woven it is woven like an ordinary cloth with winding fibers in a circumferential direction the winding is done in a circumferential direction not like this like this because the direction of the duct is also in this direction in a rotary fashion in solid woven type the cloth is woven to the desired thickness one cloth taken second and placed on top of it that way till the desired thickness is obtained and then the fourth is in laminated type the layers of cloth are held by binder and then stitched these are the various types now what are the common clutch facing materials used by the industry which make these clutches and its facing leather if you use the coefficient of friction is 0.27 cork coefficient of coefficient of friction is 0.32 fabric 0.4 this is not suitable because it's not suitable for high temperatures asbestos coefficient of friction is 0.02 this is probably the best it is 
got very good anti heat properties there's something more known as raybestos and ferrado you must have heard in the earlier years 20 25 years ago my time probably ferrado this name was quite popular now it's become obsolete as this breaks down into dust and this creates a environmental hazard now they are facing the also the non asbestos type could be man made fiber yarns man made fiber yarns for example fiber glass with special rubber binded into it or it could be an elastomer based binder and molded with pressure and heat the third type of non asbestos could be some materials woven with a brass wire brass wire has good properties of holding the material together and anti wear fourth type could be graphite materials for higher temperature we know the properties of graphite and for higher temperatures generally a graphite based non asbestos material is made for the facing a fifth type could be a sintered metal materials for severe conditions now we will come to study the three types of basic clutches the cone clutch single plate clutch and the multi plate clutch let us look at the cone clutch cone clutch this is a cone clutch in this there is a there are two cones female cone and the male cone on the male cone is the friction surface is mounted on the male cone this is the clutch shaft this is the springs the operation is you press the clutch pedal then against the spring this the male cone is disengaged from this cone the male cone against the pressure of the spring the present position which you see the clutch is in engaged position this is a simple clutch now let us see what are the advantages and disadvantages of the cone clutch in simple plate clutch which will be study here the normal force when you press the clutch pedal on the contact surface is equal to the axial force the normal force you know what is the normal force which acts on the is equal to the axial force axial force is the force which we apply mechanically in the cone clutch the advantage is that the normal force will be is always greater than the axial force so that will give it a good clutch action and the clutch will engage which can withstand higher torques disadvantage is if you see this angle between the female and the male cone if this angle is less than 20 degrees what happens is that this male cone tends to bind inside this other cone and which makes the disengagement of the clutch a little difficult cumbersome you could say <clears throat> now we come to a the single plate clutch this is a single plate clutch and this is a simplified diagram in case the question comes in the examination this is difficult to draw this is much simpler to draw you will be able to draw this diagram and explain the principle of the single plate clutch let us see 
the construction. This is a clutch pedal through a linkage. It's connected to the shaft. This is the flywheel engine shaft. It's coming from the engine. As you know, the flywheel is first thing connected to the connecting shaft is the flywheel. This is the pressure plate and in between the pressure plate and flywheel is the clutch plate. This is the cross section clutch plate and here you see the linings, clutch facing it's on both sides which I have already explained. This is the clutch plate linings. This is function of the clutch plate. When you press the clutch plate, then against the force of the spring, the pressure plate is pulled back, disengaging the clutch. Clutch spring springs are mounted circumferentially, various places, about could be six of them or eight of them. They keep the clutch in the engaged position by pressing the pressure plate onto through the clutch to the flywheel. Simple, the principle of working as I said, already when you press the brake clutch pedal, this gets disengaged against the force of the springs and clutch is disengaged. When you release the pressure, the springs act, this is the axial force and engage the clutch between the flywheel and pressure plate. However, in actual construction in a vehicle, the pressure plate, the springs, the release lever, the thrust bearing, thrust bearing is gradual when you, the torsional gradual engagement and disengagement without any noise, without any vibrations and to equally distribute the pressure. This is mounted, all these things are mounted directly through the engine, to the engine block through nuts and bolts and placing the clutch plate between the flywheel and pressure plate and later on the clutch shaft is inserted. This is the actual, this is not the actual, this is just to explain that is what I mentioned is, it's like a unit and this unit of the comprising of these three, four things are along with the cover is bolted onto the engine block directly. The diagram of a multi-plate clutch is on the next page. Instead of single plate, only difference is there will be number of clutch plates. But in even number of pairs, 4, 6, 8, 10, like that. It's an extension of the single plate clutch. Naturally, there will be an increase in the frictional surfaces. Here, there are only one, two, three, four on one clutch plate. There will be multiplied by the number of clutch plates. So, it will have a capacity for taking on increased torque. So, now alternatively, let's say if you want to reduce the size have multiple clutch plates and reduce the size of the clutch. There is a corollary to it. And for the same torque transmission. So, <coughs> multi-plate clutches are used for heavier vehicles and for racing cars. And it is also used extensively in smaller two-wheelers, scooters and motorcycles because they are constraint of space is there. This can be made into a very small clutch assembly due to the multiple number of clutch plates and it could be fitted in a scooter or motorcycle. This is the, another advantage. Now let us just look at the diagram of a multi-plate clutch.
This is expanded view. There was one touch plate. Here you find number of them. Rest of the things are the same as we explained in the point to note is there will be two sets of clutch plates always in even numbers one set will side slide on grooves on the flywheel and the other will set set let's say if there are eight four will be sliding on grooves of the flywheel and the other four will be sliding on the grooves of the pressure plate hub because as we know, the clutch is always between the flywheel and the pressure plate. So four on this hub and four on the grooves through splines on the flywheel. In the next lecture, we will examine the other types of clutches existing and that will finish the topic of clutch and then we'll go on to the gearbox thank you